All right, I'll have, we have a, uh, a PowerPoint to go through and, um, and we'll open up discussion. Um, some of you, I see some familiar faces that may have joined us uh, last week and uh, some of the slides may be the same, but uh, we'll go through them um, quickly. And uh, if there's any questions, please let me know. All right, ready to go. <clears throat> Uh, why are we here today? Uh, just give an idea of what we're focused on doing today. Uh, the review of the scope of the project, understand the impact of the proposal on Jefferson property, and then discuss community desires for the future of uh, Jefferson site. And again, the district yeah. community your voice. How do we make this small? All right. Uh, the the 2020 no, vision, and this is the scope of the project. No, honey, it's over here. Okay. Okay, is everybody on mute? There we go. Uh, yeah, next slide, please. Okay, looking at uh, this slide, um, it's uh, the same general pr uh, project that we uh, proposed and discussed with the committee uh, last year. And just to go through it quickly, that uh, each facility is going to be uh, touched and, um, and supported. So at the middle school, high school, uh, we already uh, have uh, d um, had a construction project related to the secure entry and check-in. Uh, academic wings updated. Uh, the doors that are uh, accessing uh, both sides of the media center have been replaced and uh, what a big difference that's made uh, as far as security and the uh, good solid doors uh, for those hallways. Uh, also included in the bond is the construction of a dedicated middle school gym and locker rooms. Uh, again, going through the hard uh, door and hardware uh, updates to the facility. And as you can see from the diagram that uh, we're talking about a, a partial roof replacement and uh, tr we have stra uh, track storage there, but it's also going to be uh, just general storage that we need for that building. And again, that building is currently being utilized for um, sixth through 12th grade. So we have a, a genuine middle school, high school for that facility. And uh, the gym space is getting tight now that we have athletics uh, in that gym related to uh, middle school. So it's a, a needed gym in, in our district. Uh, partial roof replacement, that is uh, the building uh, 1999, year 2000. So we're about 20 years onto that roof. And now we have to start be thinking about uh, systematically replacing uh, that roof as we move forward. So. You can see the section uh, that were designated for this grant. And just a couple of things on that diagram, uh, pick up and drop off improvements, reconfiguration of that uh, and getting the buses out of that loop and, and uh, new signage has really made uh, major improvements to the uh, flow of traffic uh, for the high school, uh, middle school, high school. All right, next one is the demolition, demolition of Jefferson Green Space that uh, what we're here to discuss to demolish the 1954 Jefferson Elementary. We talked about green space at uh, and potential maps athletic field considerations uh, and that would be between Sands Park and Jefferson site. Maintaining neighborhoods is a uh, top priority for maps and property stakeholders. That's uh, why we're here. Looking at uh, Kennedy Building, as we discussed in the past, that uh, we feel reconfiguration of that building. Um, it, it's a, a well-built building and it, it's ripe for uh, remodeling and um, uh, we'll be able to fit pre-K through fifth grade elementary in that building. It'll be awesome to have all of our students in those grade levels under one roof. Um, what comes with that is uh, demolishing of the 1927 building, um, supporting secure entry and check-in and academic wing security, update to meet modern educational standards, um, a dedicated bus and parking areas, and updated pickup and drop-off areas, which are critical for that building. Um, it's, uh, it's not very conducive right now for, um, for those kind of activities at that facility. 
And then again, Madison, uh, looking at re reutilization to Madison, but we also have some uh, current facility partners. Those are listed on the side. Uh, we're really happy that uh, Madison can be uh, fully utilized um, and these partnerships exist and we can support the community with these programs. So we're talking about minor renovations to relocate MAP central office. Uh, we need mechanical updates, mainly boiler needs to be replaced in that building. And uh, the roof replacement is key uh, for Madison. So as I said, each building will be touched um, with a bond proposal. Next slide, please. And this is similar to what we saw last year, if you were part of the presentation. Um, we have about 30 million, uh, almost $31 million uh, for an ask for the community. That uh, proposed 2.65 uh, mil increase to existing bond debt uh, to jumpstart our 20 year vision. The total of school debt would be 4.7 mils. And there's a scale there that represents um, what you may anticipate an increase in your taxes according to your property uh, values or your market value. And the bar graph below that represents uh, the first year real small there is the 1999 uh, bond um, um, that they uh, passed successfully and that the community has uh, committed four mills for the construction of that building. And with the blue bars run out, and that would be the payoff of uh, that uh, facility. And the green bars represent adding new debt to that. And so uh, the community promised, uh, and I'm grateful that they promised 4.0 mils, and we're asking for a 4.7 uh, total mil. And obviously uh, that will uh, decrease over time, just like the 1999 bond did. And as we pay that off, there's less uh, debt to be uh, collected from the community to pay the remaining uh, um, bond. So that will decrease. All right, next slide. Defining the vision for Jefferson. This is the uh, uh, essence of our, our committee here. Uh, yes, the proposed plan includes full demolition of the Jefferson building as well as the necessary site work to create an open park-like green space at the Jefferson site. The current playground equipment and parking lot will be maintained until a plan for that site has been further developed. Slide. We jump one. Yep, yeah, there we go. Uh, and we've talked, this is a slide from uh, that we used uh, last time we've talked with the uh, Jefferson uh, group. Uh, proposed community green space, a community recreation athletic potential. The items outlined below are just a sample of some of the potential items discussed within the community to date. And as you can see, the uh, diagrams represent some possibilities in that green space. All right, next slide. This committee will work to determine how to meet the needs of, um, oh, make sure talk on my screen, meet the needs of both district and community in collaboration with Jefferson neighborhood stakeholders, district representatives, city of Manistee, Manistee County planners, Sands Park Committee, architecture and engineer contractors, and other associated recreational entities. So definitely looking at a partnership uh, on this work and uh, like to hear what people are thinking in the end and provide us some insight and um, develop a scope and idea and, uh, of the possibilities for the site. So the considerations, elements of green space to serve community and recreational needs. You know, we talked about location of a hundred yard uh, practice field. Obviously with the development of Kennedy, we'll be losing that field. And uh, that is currently utilized. So green space is uh, for the district use is, uh, is being compromised with the development of that. You know, the optimization of Sands Park amenities, possibility. 
discuss city and county park plan and consider collaborative uh, direction. Uh, we've heard subdivision of property and green space, residential use, um, new purpose, other ideas that we haven't thought of at this point. So I think uh, we're asking, um, just sharing some of the, the ideas that we've heard or conversations that we had. And again, we're, we want to open this up. Next steps. Uh, summary of ideas shared, outreach to community entities, explore options, reconvene committee to discuss progress. So this is, um, this is our thought, this is our idea, and we're really asking for community support and um, we're forming uh, our ideas and plans for a recommendation to the Board of Education. Next slide. As always, the district needs your voice. Uh, consider joining the advocacy effort, encourage community members to exercise their right to vote and help inform those around you of the project and importance. So not only uh, for the Jefferson communication for that site, but the overall um, plan and the scope of the work that we're looking at in the MAPS 2020 vision. Uh, it's really important that uh, we hear your voice who's here today, but also sharing that with others in the community so that they're informed and may be able to uh, you know, uh, participate in uh, making some guided decisions. So with, with that, it's kind of right where we left off our conversations for those that attended last year in Jefferson's gym. And uh, we did a reset um, not following through with the May election last year because of the COVID circumstance. And uh, we're, we're still in the thick of that situation, but uh, we feel it's imperative at this time that we move forward with this bond ask, and uh, uh, which puts us in a position to start talking about Jefferson's site again. So I would, uh, any questions related to the presentation or to, to clarify uh, where we're at or any opinions to that, please uh, speak up. Yeah, I have a couple of questions if, uh, if I may. Please. Um, so um, just to introduce myself, my, my wife and I bought a house uh, at 445 Cedar Street um, a year ago. And so we are direct neighbors to um, Part of the playground for the school, yeah. Um, and um, uh, since since I'm I'm relatively new to the community, I have a couple of questions. One would be, um, what what are the what are the needs of uh, the school district for athletic fields? What kind of uh, sports um, are you are you seeing taking place at, at the Jefferson site in the future? Um, if we uh, develop that as a um, as a recreational or athletic site, um, we're we're really uh, looking for some green open space uh, that we could potentially line for uh, soccer, youth soccer. Uh, I know that uh, middle school football uh, could po potentially utilize that for practice, not necessarily a game field. And uh, I know there's a, um, you know, the Manistee Recreation, uh, uh, they utilize our green spaces for uh, youth soccer programs and their uh, popcorn or football programs. Okay. Um, and... Uh... What is the um, what are the ideas about who's who's going to own the, the site in the future? Will it still be the school district, the city, or? Well, I, I think that's open to discussion. Um, I, I'm, I'm being sensitive uh, to the neighborhood there, and I think there's uh, some possibilities related to the the, the district's uh, continued use of that as a green space and. And for a school purpose, we would own that. Um, I, I talking to the city. You know, the city is saying uh, we have plenty of green spaces and park play and park areas. And um, if you're familiar, sir, with uh, Sands uh, Park, which is adjacent to Kennedy Elementary and the old high school, the park 
that mm -hmm. is to the south of that. Um, you know, try, the city is asking us to be sensitive to the redundancy of the same type of space in a in the same neighborhood, and uh, and that's understood. And I know that uh, we've heard some conversation related to the potential uh, parceling and development of the property. And I think, uh, you know, there's, you know, the concerns I hear about that is, uh, you know, what, is, what would the zoning of that be? What would that potentially look like? And, um, you know, what kind of project, uh, you know, would that development potentially look like? And um, so all those unknowns I know is very sensitive to the uh, neighborhood um, to, to, have, um, to have that kind of project without having a strong understanding of what it exactly will look like in a promise of what it would potent, you know, what it would look like. I'm uh, Paul Gunderson. Yep. I'm I live across the street from uh, Jefferson and I had a couple questions about it. First of all, the funding of it, would this come from the demolition portion of uh, the bond issue? Uh, for the first question, uh, and sort of based on that, what would be the extent of development? For example, if you put in practice fields or soccer fields or football fields, um, would those be irrigated or leveled or would they just be grass uh, where you know the terrain already exists? Uh, Thirdly, who would, who would be responsible for maintenance and mowing and uh, things like that? And uh, so if you could address those. Yeah, let me uh, try to address those. And if I've missed it, uh, one of the questions that you were looking for, just uh, restate it, please. But okay. uh, yeah. the, the, the cost of, um, uh, it is included in the bond uh, that, uh, uh, that taking the building down and prepping that uh, site is part of the bond issue. It wouldn't be any other outside funds or, or you know, once the, the, the bond passes, that means that money is dedicated for that purpose so that we couldn't redirect it uh, anywhere else. It, it would have to stay, stay for the improvement of that site. And so uh, the district, as long as um, the district owns it, we will maintain it. So we'll cut the grass, maintain it, and uh, you know, fix anything that may be broken or deficient. And uh, you know, at that time, we'll probably level it uh, the best that we can, that it'd be usable for open field, per se, uh, middle school football practice, or Pop Warner, or uh, soccer uh, league. Uh, there are a couple of uh, soccer goals currently at the uh, old uh, high school, and those those would come over. Um, it, it wouldn't be necessarily irrigated um, field. Um, I think we can make that decision, but it's not currently priced in to be part of that project. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything I didn't uh, cover that you asked, or additional things? No, additionally. Uh how stable would this uh, be after it would be constructed? I mean, would uh, how um, how subject to change would that be? And I would imagine part of that would be how formal the thing looked. I mean, if it was kind of a green space with a meandering walk that people could jog and walk their dogs on, it would seem like future boards and councils could say, Oh, there's nothing at the Jefferson site. Let's put it there. Uh, so, can you address that? Well, it uh, it would be a asset of the district, and so the commitment that this board makes for it um, um, would be, you know, the commitment and uh, and and promise to the neighborhood at, and the community at that time. Now, if there is a, a need for, uh, I don't know, another facility or development of that property, that would be the right of the future of the, of, or future boards to, to decide on. Uh, but we have done a, a, um, a forecast of uh, enrollment in the district, and, and I don't see uh, that we need additional facilities related to school, but the, there may be, if it is used for athletics or or outdoor events that there may be uh, improvements made to it. And we talked about maybe a picnic area or a small pavilion or bathrooms, maybe in the future for it or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
that that could be determined on the on the boards uh, on their behalf if they want to make improvements. Okay. But but if they felt that they needed to sell it as an asset, that that may be part of the for operations. They need that money for operations. They may consider that too. Uh, excuse me. Were you uh, were you uh, speaking of the building now, like selling the building and sectioning it out, or? Nope, the building would come down. Uh, and what was the what was the reason for that? It's a it's uh, a very old building, and it's uh, it's not uh, it's kind of outgrown its usable life, and we uh, have a, a larger potential elementary in Kennedy where everyone could fit into it. So uh, there's a ratio of square footage per enrollment, and uh, we're exceeding the square footage that we maintain and pay for uh, per student. So it, we're, the model is a little bit uh, inefficient uh, per student. Does that make well, sense? I understand, I understand that, but uh, I think what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, maybe just uh, explore is if there has been any consideration of just sectioning out the the part of the site that the building is on and just sell that with the building on it. But we, um, I, I don't know if the building has is usable. You know, once we once we leave it, it, it may be. But I think. Uh, I think it's more ideal what the other side of the coin of our conversation is uh, de a development of housing and appropriate housing for the neighborhood is is part of the conversation that I know the the city is uh, interested in us uh, adding to our conversation. Uh, Ron, if I can just jump in. Um, uh, this is Teresa Anderson and I'm a board member and I also live in the uh, in the neighborhood. Um, so nice to meet you, uh, Mr. Lerum. Lerum. Um, yeah, but uh, we, this, um, the, the presentation that Ron went through was, it's a culmination of about, I wanna say about four years of doing a facility um, strategic plan uh, for, for the school district. Is that, is that about right, Ron? It is. Okay. And so um, they looked at the feasibility of of keeping even a portion of the building um, for that gym space uh, or um, or selling it as is. In the past, um, if you're familiar with on US 31 um, heading north on the way to the like where the hospital is, um, there's an older school building that the district used to own um, called, it was the former Kennedy Elementary. And the history with that building, it was um, built, I think, after Jefferson School was built and um, was taken offline from the district, uh, I'm not sure how many years ago. So at that time, they tried to sell that land with the building on it. And um, it was, it took a long time for that to happen. Um, so they finally did. Um, in the meantime, it's been sitting vacant and the people that purchased it or the company that purchased it um, they were unable to, uh, I guess, put their business in or have anything come to fruition. So um, within the community, um, there's a lot of like hard feelings over how the district has handled our buildings in the past. And um, in the, at the current Kennedy site, um, where the old high school is from 1927 that sits there vacant, um, that's been problematic as well because that uh, to tear down that building, which is no longer usable or viable or um, or sound, um, was a lot of money, and that was not included in any of the previous bonds. So the district in the community kind of has the history of not maintaining or um, being responsible for for their buildings at all. So that's why. Uh, since we determined that the building is not uh, viable for use or, or selling, um, that we would want to tear that down um, when we take it offline so that we don't have that, uh, so we're not perpetuating that, uh, I guess, reputation and we're being responsible stewards. Yeah, I, yeah that's a good point. I wouldn't want a uh, decrepit uh, non-district maintained building uh, sitting uh, in any neighborhood um, and uh, at 
at risk of just sitting there abandoned and not utilized. And I, do, I want to point out too that Madison Elementary is an example of us partnering and uh, sustaining one of the school buildings uh, with multiple uh, community partners. So it's it's something we've done, um, but I just don't see the capacity for it at, uh, at this site using that building. And another uh, piece to this, I think, is that um, since as a district, we're trying to right size ourselves um, to the enrollment that we have um, and, and, and be more efficient and streamline, um, we, I think we would want to maybe take a look at not uh, um, maintaining or um, even owning um, that piece, um, the Jefferson location. Um, it is an asset for the district right now. And so what we would like is the input and I guess the um, uh, conversation of how can uh, we utilize that space responsibly uh, to the benefit of the community, but also um, so that it fits in with the neighborhood um, that we all live in um, and, and, and do that uh, responsibly. So it would be like a win-win-win. Win. 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 <laughs> Winning. <laughs> so I, I appreciate that, uh, Teresa. I'm going to kind of just cut to the chase. I mean, I appreciate you guys taking up some evening here and, you know, let's kind of get to the, the heart of the conversation. Um, any other thought or, or any questions that you have related to the scope of work and how we got here is, is fine. I don't want to dismiss that. Uh, but some of you have sat through uh, this conversation uh, before. Um, and, and, and those that haven't, we want to bring you along also. But uh, anybody else have any insight to kind of move our conversation forward? Mr. Stoneman, this is Mick Shemansky. And, okay. and again, we, we've talked a few times on this. And, and again, to me, um, you know, I, I think there's some, some real possibilities for uh, the community to get um, more involved in, in supporting this if they know that there is some trade-offs to the community and, and giving that land so that we can build additional individual houses in the city in a great location, I think has huge potential. Again, if you, you know, just um, general, you know, new construction is, you know, 200 to $300,000. Uh, just imagine how many nice, you know, new homes could be built on that property uh, that are paying taxes, that are helping support the schools, that are providing, you know, the kinds of homes that would attract families with children. Right, so it, it really does make sense uh, in, in, a, in when you're looking at developing um, this proposal to have that opportunity uh, for growth. Uh, and, and again, as we've, we've discussed many times, housing in the city is, is a challenge and uh, there are very few opportunities for new housing to be developed in that area. So. That, that's, that's the part that I see as being a really uh, advantageous for the community itself. It grows opportunities for the school system, as well as providing some revenues back to the city uh, in the way of taxes uh, on individual homesteads. Thank you, Mick. Any, any uh, other insight? Uh, anyone want to um, counter or discuss a uh, continue mixed topic related to development? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm Randy. I've lived between Vida and Teresa. So, um, and I sell real estate. Uh, that site, I, I did a little research last night, just sitting around. Um, it's zoned. Um, R2, which is a medium, medium density residential. I don't know if you've gotten this far, probably with the city a little bit. Um, the whole site is just a little bit over five acres. And um, I, Mick and I will have heated, or not heated, but um, very good discussion 
on, on many occasions. Um, there is opportunity, obviously, for um, new residential in the area. Um, building cost per square foot is about $200 a square foot right now based on materials. So um, I don't know if you've, get, if, if you've gotten that far to say out of the five acres, we could have uh, 10 parcels um, and what that would bring, but um, not much building going on right now because of the lack of contractors and because of the cost of materials has gone up so incredibly high. Yeah, we're trying to put a bond project together. I understand that. Yeah. 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 And, and again, I know it's, it's zoned, uh, but I, I would see that really being individual parcels, you know, individual housing, not, not anything other than that in that district. But how, I guess I don't understand then with the, with the zoning. So Randy, you're saying that that was zoned R2. So, um, we would, there's no guarantee though that that would not be changed, correct? Or that it's well, if, if zoned you, because haven't there been issues before um, that have come up where the zoning has changed quickly to accommodate like say a larger uh, project? But again, I, you know, again, if you did it as individual lots uh, based on R1, um, and divided that property up in that location, uh, then I think you, you would you would be you know uh, closer to satisfying the idea that we don't you know develop this as you know um, um, medium density and and keep it to individual homes. And I, again, I, I get it you know that it's it's probably not the most opportune time, uh, but this isn't going to happen overnight. And, and again, I know that I've, I've been looking at properties in Manistee and there's not very many um, for new homes uh, within the city limits. So. And has there been any new homes built in that neighborhood in the last year or two? There have, um, you know, the, there's been a couple of them that have been built um, in, in that general area, uh, you know, a few streets away and a number of nice renovations have been completed in that area as well. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the uh, medium density residential, um, I can show you on my, oh, no, I can't share my screen, but um, those zoning districts are fairly well set and uh, the, east side of Cedar is pretty much the delineation of medium density residential and that goes all the way to um, the industrial um, zoning down by Manistee Lake. So everything west of Cedar Street um, with the exception of a couple of things south of 8th Street is all, uh, so west of Cedar would be low density residential and then east of Cedar all the way through the city is medium density residential. And that's just a, a differentiation of uh, lot size and road frontage per parcel. So it's not a, there are some things you can do in medium density with special use permits that you cannot in the low density, but right. I don't, and I don't think make anything, anybody's talking about doing a high rise apartment no. building or anything like that, no. um, but more just individual lots um, with some road frontage yeah, and, and then, so if the district is the owner of those and uh, lots and brokers those, uh, so we can determine lot size and 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 so forth. Right. And, uh, you'd have an engineering right. firm. Yeah, you'd have an engineering firm or a spicer group possibly come out and and uh, survey it and and get it all split up at that point. Well, uh, if I can uh, introduce a couple of ideas there, I think. Uh, it, it's really interesting um, discussion, uh, but I think we need to put more thought in it than just uh, cutting it up like you go out with a knife and, mm -hmm. and, and throw the knife in the ground. You know, um, I think it would be really interesting if we could develop this as, an, as, a, 
as a wonderful green space with, uh, say, um, playground equipment and maybe some walking paths and, and trees and, and uh, places for activities. And at the same time, perhaps at the, at the perimeter zone along the streets, uh, developed housing, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so that we're not just thinking, cutting it up into pieces, but, you know, since the uh, school district owns it, it would be, you know, we could even do a, a, some kind of idea competition for it, get some really good ideas out. Um, there are some really wonderful places around the country. If you start looking, um, one of them, uh, which I really love is uh, in um, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, it's called a gathering space. I don't know if you have are familiar with that. Uh, it's at a much larger larger scale, and it was founded by the Kaiser Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this is an opportunity where we uh, should should um, consider. Uh, a range of ideas, I think, and just um, throw them out like Randy did and, and others have done and um, and see see where it takes us. Yeah, yeah, no, no, nothing is, uh, we haven't put pen to paper or anything. We're just gathering some ideas. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in the back of my mind, uh, you're representing kind of a compromise of, uh, to, to save and uh, design something that captures some, some gathering space, some, some, you know, some mm -hmm. pathways or, so, uh, or something, and uh, a mix of housing also. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that compromise uh, makes that property even more ideal and potentially uh, value increase too. So I agree. I, I, I think that, and, and you know, I have to keep in mind that the development of Sands Park is a great opportunity too. So what we're not able to capture or develop at Jefferson, what could we, what could we potentially improve in Sands Park where it's still in the neighborhood and I've got, uh, you know, 500 students that could utilize it on a daily basis. And that's the challenge with Jefferson, that that kind of exposure and use uh, would not be available, nor do we want the probably the noise and, and the traffic of that kind of in that neighborhood either. So I'm with you. Um, I think there's a potential compromise for uh, housing and, uh, uh, you know, not over uh, develop the, the site and take consideration for some green space that could be used commonly. Mm -hmm. We tend to focus uh, green space on the summer and spring and fall months, but unfortunately we, we have about three or four months of winter as well. And uh, just to throw out, um, there has been talk amongst us already of, uh, of some sort of a uh, walkway uh, that you know possibly could also double as like a cross country skiing space. I see people are doing that around the neighborhood and on the golf course where all the snow blows off and there isn't any snow. I think that'd be a pretty good winter use for that area. It could be groomed and uh, the city could be involved in that maybe. And um, so the closest cross country course around here is out M55. And I believe that's owned by the city, but uh, that could attract, you know, more citywide use too. Mm -hmm. that, that's a great point. Uh, we did uh, put, we, we uh, wrote a grant for cross country equipment for the school and developed a, a loop at the school last year at the middle school, high school. Uh, but uh, having a portion of that available to uh, use for the same type of pur purpose or connect. And how could this potentially be a path like that uh, be part of the overall non-motorized uh, plan too? Could it be a, some sort of trailhead potentially or a cut through to the beach that could be tied into other potential trails that are, are being considered or developed too? Mm -hmm. And, and, and yep. I think the, what we're trying to, a green space that's uh, a little bit more quieter than, than uh, a traditional park environment for that neighborhood too, w would be a, a thought. 
you know, something also to keep in mind is that, you know, Manistee has a number of parks, uh, actually quite a few considering the size of the community. And they all cost money to maintain and sustain. So just remember there, you know, nothing is free. Uh, so, and neither is green space. Also, you know, the, the county uh, has done a lot of work on the, on the uh, non-motorized uh, trail plans. Uh, so there are some of those green space opportunities that are linking. Uh, we're kind of a step away from where I see most of them uh, as far as the location, because Lincoln School is, you know, or Jefferson School is an island, uh, so to speak, uh, compared to some of the other, the other venues that they have uh, kind of established going through the city. But, but I do like the idea of, of combining uh, green space, some open areas, some trail plans, as, and housing in, in that district. I think that's a great idea. I think it fits, that idea fits well for that neighborhood. It really mm -hmm. does. And maybe I'm just uh, getting too into the weeds, but I'm also wondering with the, if, if we were to do a combined residential and then um, green space, with that green space, then would that be a neighborhood association that would maintain and manage that? Because I'm wondering with, um, Again, for the school district, then we're still uh, responsible for for that. So, um, I th yeah, I mean, I like the I like the idea of that just because I'm I'm in the neighborhood, but um, but just from the school perspective, I'm not sure um, how that would work. And I think we might be talking about the relationship with the city um, with something like that too. And, um, and, and then, then Sands Park conversation is part of that. I know that we probably will have a greater interest in supporting uh, Sands Park because of the amount of students in that area. And so I, I think there is a, there's a potential of uh, supporting each other potentially between the two parks. Mick, don't you think there's a, some possibilities there? Absolutely, yeah. I, and, I, and again, the collaboration is key. Um, so that we, we get the most use out of the properties that we're both maintaining and we can share funds that makes a lot of sense. And, and again, I don't know if, if, if uh, um, kind of a community association would be what would be necessary, but I certainly get the idea that, you know, the school system doesn't want to have the, an obligation to support a small little piece of, of green space within a, a housing area. Or a, or a community area. So it would make more sense that the city would be involved in supporting that. And, and again, certainly with trade-offs between Sands Park and that little area, that would make sense. Yeah. Just so yeah. the whole thing doesn't become another park. That's, mm -hmm. I, I think, a, probably a non-starter for the city. Um, and and I'm, I'm only saying that for myself, not, not from, a, from a, a city representative. But uh, again, we, uh, it's it's expensive to maintain the parks that we already have, and and uh, and again, some of them the use certainly is is questionable to support the costs associated with that. So um, this this could be a, a good balance uh, for the community. Yeah, so we're we're joint owners of Sand Park, and we have an agreement uh, there, and so I, I think. Uh, well, the, using that agreement, expanding and altering or, or reviewing as a possibility to get this done. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm coming back to maybe my first question then, because, um, uh, you know, if the school needs more atlet athletic fields, yeah. um, is there really a need for it at Jefferson or or could there be a trade, a trade, uh, so that the school got maybe the entire Sands Park for mm -hmm. athletic fields, and then the city would uh, take over Jefferson? Or I mean, th there is a little distance between the two. Is that a practice? Sure. Issue or would the students just walk over there to play soccer? Or how how, how are you seeing? Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I, uh, I'm sorry, yes, I think that exists and you're reading between the lines a little bit uh, related to uh, if our students are so you know tightly located to Sands Park, it may be uh, uh, an idea to develop the green spaces use at Sands Park rather than Jefferson too. So that so the open fields and the things that we're looking to accomplish to support our athletics and our, our community activities uh, we may be looking at Sands Park instead of Jefferson and, and working with the city on, uh, on that agreement on how, how the current agreement may adjust related to our need or use of it. And um, that, may be, that may be the convert that is the conversation most likely uh, to have uh, just to explore options. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think you're spot on. You, you kind of read between our discussion on that possibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think the uh, it would not be a good idea to create an, an owner's association for the green space at the Jefferson site, because okay. when you add the word association, then the co-owners um, will claim ownership and that... No, I don't want to go down that right. road. No, Way better to I stay agree. away from it. Yeah. yeah, and and also it's too small to really kind of it, it's not it's not scaled to be able to be in, in effective in that realm. So I agree. I, and I don't know real estate, maybe Randy, like you do, but I imagine there's some sort of easement that we would create through the property that allows uh, you know some flexible space uh, on the property with an easement, and I, we can accomplish that through a permit or or the city council allowing that. Mm -hmm. And there's probably uh, the end of Locust Street is on the south side there. Sixth Street stops at the parking lot, but um, and just from the aerial views, I, I can't tell if there's any more vacated streets than than just those. But yeah. it does look like there's three parcels there actually. So, yeah. and it looks you know again we we could even look at that as being an overlay district and then really creating something unique potentially uh you know the small houses for example there's a lot of opportunities uh when you when you come to you know planning a site like that that we can explore so um i would like to uh speak with uh, our attorney and let them know what options and what, what we're thinking about with this piece of property and maybe get some, um, get some advice and some uh, direction related to how um, some scenarios could be put together. I think uh, I was gonna do that prior to this meeting, but I didn't wanna bring any assumptions to the table. Um, so, it, but it sounds like, we're at a place, I think, that, uh, that I need to be able to provide um, uh, some information to the board related to this possibility and what our, uh, our council ad advise us uh, related to some scenarios. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Sure. Randy, how are you feeling? Yeah, that sounds good. Um, and I think the design of or the the if it if it, the board decides and, and the committee kind of recommends here to the board that it be um, a mix of maybe individual parcels and or some green space, um, a good engineering firm will, I mean, they can create walking paths and you can have a, a path from Bryant over to Locust through the parcels um, that would probably make sense um, for having some sort of something like that with a less dense um, building sites than, than stacked on top of each other. Mm -hmm. Right, there's a lot of property there that is uh, per se currently landlocked. So just looking yep. at curb, curb lots right now, I think creates, uh, as the possibility to create some, some good space within that five mm -hmm. acres. Yep. And the, proceeds of the sale would pay for the uh, splitting and surveying and, and 
all of the other things that go along mm -hmm. with curb cuts. And, and, and if there was even more profit, we could consider what kind of money could be invested in what we need uh, another green space to be for us too. Okay. And they could go towards Sands Park, the development there. or private parking for the superintendent. One of the, <laughs> one of the yeah. over at Madison. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Kennedy. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, is, within uh, another, uh, maybe a week or 10 days, get the holidays over here and uh, reconvene this committee to meet again, kind of give an update on information that's been uh, provided to us by council. And uh, of course, you know, we have a, uh, we have an architect uh, on, on board right now, and uh, we have Chrisman Construction that's on board with us for, for our bond. Uh, They're great resources for dropping this idea in their lap, and, and they, uh, they can point us in some directions uh, uh, to talk about possibilities also. So maybe two weeks, we'll get back together. Is that, is that fine? Good. And I will send the uh, invite and uh, we'll meet in this way and um, we'll see if we can move this conversation forward. I really like where we're at right now. Um, ponder on it. And uh, if you feel you have some insight or concern, uh, send me an email or give me a call that, uh, that you may, you know, if something comes to mind, you want me to ask counsel about maybe zoning, anything that you feel that there's a question that needs to be answered and you think of it, uh, just give me an email or a phone call, okay? Very good. Great. Sounds great. Thanks for including us. Oh, thank I, you. I couldn't do this without you guys and, uh, and bring others if you think they may be interested to the table uh, at our next meeting too. Okay. It's a community effort. All right. Have a good evening. And again, thank you for joining. Anything thank else you. before we go? What? Anything from you? Any? Oh, for me? Yeah. Uh, have a great Thanksgiving and stay safe. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.